Hi, everybody. Just uh, getting a few last minute things ready. We'll start in about 28 seconds as you can see on the timer. Um, I think I have everything set up and ready to go. I did wake up a little bit late this morning. We'll start in about 12 seconds. Nine, eight. I shouldn't count down, should I? Is it fun when I count down? Three, two, one. Well, hello everyone. Hello and welcome to this lesson where I'm going to talk about the dentist and the eye doctor. I must say I have a lot of experience going to the dentist. I don't actually have a lot of experience going to the eye doctor. Um but as you know, the dentist takes care of your teeth and the eye doctor takes care of your eyes. I thought this would be a good lesson where I can teach you some of the vocabulary that you'll need to know in order to visit an eye doctor or to talk about your eyesight and your eyes uh and some vocabulary um that you'll need to know to visit the dentist. Um all of us have teeth and need to have our teeth taken care of sometimes. So, in this English lesson, we'll go over all of those things or at least most of them. It's a fairly long lesson. I should make sure that I keep a good pace. I do wanna say welcome to everyone in the chat. I see Madi and Rachel Ting over there. Lolly Lolly is here. I see Corey J and Annie Watt and I know Ev Jenny is here. Brent from American English with this guy is here. Uh Norma, let me scroll back to see. Tony is here. Donia is here. Dave the Canadian and Todd the Canadian are here. That's awesome. Um I'm just going back through the names. Key Park is here. I see Sam the Taiwanese. Gaga is here. Hi, Gaga. Good to see you again as well. Um Sam the Taiwanese who I think I've just said twice but <laughs> welcome to all of the people who are in the chat. Welcome to all the regulars. Welcome to all the subscribers and welcome to all the members. It is really good to see all of you. I hope you're having a good day and I hope you're ready to learn a little bit about the dentist and the eye doctor. If you have questions, please use the form that Todd or Dave will give a link to in the chat. Please only ask questions about the lesson. I know in the last few weeks, there have been some grammar and just general English questions coming in through the form. Please don't do that during this lesson. It's a lesson where I like to stay on topic. There will be a live lesson tomorrow where you can ask almost any question you want. So, feel free to do that then. Uh but let's get started. Um was there something else I was gonna say? Yeah. Um no, let's just get started. I think that's the, a good idea. I got up a bit late this morning. Let's hope the lesson goes well when the teacher is a bit tired. Um here we go. So, the dentist is obviously the person who takes care of your teeth. Uh when your teeth hurt or when you just need a cleaning or when you need someone to examine your teeth, you would go and see the dentist. A dentist in Canada uh is different than visiting the doctor. So, in Canada, the doctor's office and the dentist's office are different places, okay? If I have um a concern about any other part of my body, I would go to see the doctor but if I have something wrong with my teeth or I just need a checkup, I would go to the dentist. The dentist works in a place called the dentist's office. We often refer to places as offices. It's not really an office. It's more like a a combination between a medical center and an office, I guess but it's a place where you go if you need the dentist to look at your teeth. In Canada, we also call it a dental center. So, sometimes the dental center will call to remind me that I have an appointment and then I'll remember that I need to go to the dentist's office the next week. So, we use the words interchangeably. Um I do wanna remind you that center is spelled differently in Canada. We spell it with an R-E at the end instead of an E-R. Um but definitely, if you need to see the dentist, you would go to the dentist's office and in order to do that, you need to book an appointment, okay? So, when I know that I need to go to the dentist, I will phone the dentist. I will call the dentist and I will book an appointment or I will make an appointment and they'll put my name on their calendar and they'll say, okay, Bob, you can come in next Wednesday at 8 a.m. 
So, I would then say my dentist appointment is next Wednesday at 8 a.m. I need to go to the dentist next Wednesday at 8 a.m. because I've booked an appointment. I've made an appointment to see the dentist. So, you can use book or make in that situation. And then, I just wanted to talk about this phrasal verb for a sec. When you know the time of your appointment, you know when to show up, okay? We use the phrasal verb show up quite a bit in English. If I said to someone, I have a dentist appointment next week, they might say, you know you need to show up early because of COVID because you have to be 15 minutes early for your screening. They have to ask you questions and then I could reply and say, yeah, I was planning to show up early because I wanna make sure that there's lots of time for them to do that. So, when you make an appointment or book an appointment, you then know when you need to show up at the dentist's office for your appointment. Basically, it just means to arrive but for some reason, we like to say show up. Um when you get there, you will definitely be sitting in a waiting room. The waiting room at my dentist's office doesn't look this fancy. This is a very nice waiting room. The waiting room in at my dentist's office doesn't have nice chairs like that. It does have a table with magazines on it um and it does have some nice music playing in the background and the uh, the waiting room also has a television on the wall which is showing the news of the day, the 24-hour news channel. So, when I go to the dentist's office, I often watch a little bit of the news while I'm waiting in the waiting room. The waiting room is the room where you wait. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Um so, definitely when I need to go to the dentist, I book an appointment, I show up on time, I wait in the waiting room um until it's my turn to go and sit in the dentist chair. So, most of you will be familiar with the dentist chair. The dentist chair is a very comfortable looking chair but I actually don't enjoy going to the dentist. So, even though this chair looks very comfortable and very relaxing, when I go to the dentist, I'm actually quite tense. I don't like going to the dentist and having my teeth cleaned. It's not the most enjoyable experience for me. But there is a dentist chair. The dentist chair will recline. It will tilt back. So, the person who is going to examine your teeth the first person might not be the dentist but we'll get to that in a sec. They'll say, I'm going to tilt you back a little bit or I'm going to put the chair back and then they'll the chair will go mm, and then you will be in a um what we call a prone position or you will be lying down in the chair ready for your examination. At the very back, the chair has a headrest. So, you put your head on the headrest. They tilt the dentist chair back and then you are ready for your appointment. I'm not sure if you do this when you go to the dentist but there is a bright light that the dentist shines on your face and into your mouth and so, they usually give you a pair of sunglasses to wear. Um when I go to the dentist, they give me a pair of sunglasses and then the light isn't as bright but I have a <laughs> funny a funny feeling they give you sunglasses so they don't accidentally poke you in the eye. <laughs> that's that's my theory. My funny theory about the dentist is they give you sunglasses because the light is very bright but I also think they give you sunglasses so they don't accidentally poke you in the eye. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's true but it certainly makes me feel a little bit better when they're using their sharp tools. <laughs> uh, let me see here. The person who actually starts working on your teeth for us in Canada and most parts of the world is called a dental hygienist. There's actually two types of people that work on and examine your teeth. One is a dentist. The other is a dental hygienist. The dental hygienist does the cleaning. So, the dental hygienist will clean your teeth. The dental hygienist will do all of the routine maintenance on your teeth, okay? I guess maintenance is the right word but the dental hygienist will look at your teeth, will clean your teeth and then eventually, the dentist will come and visit and have a look at your teeth as well. When you go to the dentist, we often say you're going for a checkup, okay? This is a very common term. <laughs> it's a very common term. Uh, 
I'm just laughing at Brent's comment or shrapnel from the fluoride or from the polishing right at the end Brent. Yeah, sunglasses to protect your eyes. Um often when you go to the doctor or the eye doctor or the dentist, we refer to it as a checkup. You're going for a checkup. A checkup is just you're not going because you have something specific that you need the dentist to look at. You're going once a year or every six months just so that someone takes a look at your teeth to make sure everything is okay. So, we call that a checkup. Um so, you might call the dentist and say, I'd like to book an appointment for next week and they might say, oh, are you experiencing any problems? And you could say, no, I just need I just need to book a checkup. It's been six months or it's been one year since I've visited the dentist. I need a checkup. So, it's just a simple um they look at your teeth, they clean your teeth, etc. So, the biggest thing that happens when you go to the dentist is you have a cleaning. Um a cleaning is when they just go over every tooth with their little uh picks and they have that little mirror that they put in your mouth and they just kind of scrape everything off your teeth that isn't supposed to be there. Um that's probably what takes the most time during a visit to the dentist or during a dentist's appointment is the cleaning. Depending on how well you brush your teeth and how well you floss your teeth, the cleaning will take a different amount of time. If you are really good at taking care of your teeth yourself, the cleaning will take less time. I know I didn't go to the dentist because of COVID for almost a year. So, when I went to the dentist a little while ago, the cleaning took a very long time. Even though I brush my teeth three times a day, usually twice, And I do floss. Talk about what that is in a sec. So, maybe you go for a checkup. Maybe you go to the dentist because you have a toothache. So, maybe one of your teeth just hurts. Maybe you have a tooth that just gives you some pain and you're thinking, oh, I should go to the dentist to have the dentist check this out. Okay? Another phrasal verb there. Um I actually had it once where um I had a tooth break. And that really hurt. So, not only was my tooth broken and a piece of my tooth came out but I also had a lot of pain and so, I went to the dentist and they fixed everything. It was very nice of them. I was very happy that they fixed my teeth. Um let's do one more and then I'll do some questions. You might need an x-ray. I do not get an x-ray of my teeth every time I go to the dentist. I think they do it every year or every two years. I'm not sure. But an x-ray is something that um they put little things in your mouth and then they take a picture of your teeth using x-rays and then they can see if you have cavities. So, a cavity is tooth decay. A cavity is a spot on your tooth where the tooth is not healthy. So, they might say, we took x-rays, sir, and it looks like you have a cavity on one of your teeth. Not a good t- not a good thing to hear. Um because if you have a cavity, it means you'll need to come back for something else in a little bit but I'll talk about that once we're done the questions. So, let's have a look at some of the questions here. Let me get my questions up on the screen. Let's see here. Next question is from or first question is from Yo-Yo. Hello, teacher Bob. Nice to see you. Just let me adjust something here. I wanna make that a bit bigger. Can you tell me how often do you see a dentist for a checkup? Thank you in advance. I usually go every six months, okay? I think that most people in Canada, maybe it's every nine months. It's definitely more than a year. Um I can't actually remember yo-yo but I think that I go about every six to nine months to the dentist. It sounds like a lot um but that's generally how often I go. Um and what I should say as well is in Canada, it costs money to go to the dentist but through my job, I have what are called benefits. So, my work pays my bill at the dentist, okay? I don't have to pay for the dentist. For many people in Canada, they have jobs where they have benefits and then your work, your place of employment pays indirectly but they pay for your dentist bills. So, it makes it a little easier to go more often. A lot of Canadians have that. Some Canadians don't. Um let's see. Leo says, sup Bob. So, sup is a short form for what's up. So, sup Bob. 
Are you as cool as a cucumber during dental checkups? No. I am tense. I don't like going to the dentist. It is one of my least favorite things to do in life. I I'm not gonna say that I hate it but I do not like going to the dentist. So, um so, Brent says, my teacher insurance allows me to go twice a year. So, benefits can also be called insurance. So, through work, many people have health insurance or dental insurance or eye care insurance. So, when I say benefits, Brent's using the word insurance. It's basically the same thing. We have jobs as teachers where there are certain benefits to the job. One is to have insurance that covers your teeth. But back to the question, no, Leo, I do not enjoy going to the dentist. Uh Naomi, hi, teacher Bob. Is it common to get a wisdom tooth pulled out in your country? Yes. So, I have all of my wisdom teeth were pulled out many, many years ago. Wisdom teeth are the teeth at the very back of the top and bottom. Most people get their wisdom teeth out when they're usually about 20, sometimes when you're 18, 19. Um I think I had mine out when I was 25 but yes, wisdom teeth, we do get them pulled out. Um let's see here. Isam says, good morning, teacher Bob. How are you? What's the difference between tooth and grinder? I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the word grinder when it comes to teeth but I do know sometimes they polish your teeth and sometimes they will work on teeth to create space between them and they'll use something um I don't think you would call it a grinder though. So, sorry, Isam. I don't have a lot of of knowledge about t- uh, dental work. Let's see here. Daniel says, dear teacher, how often do you go to a dentist in Canada? So, about I would say about every nine months, six to nine months. Do you visit a dentist hygiene as well? If so, what are the procedures for hygiene? So, Daniel, we practice good dental hygiene at home. So, we brush and floss. But we also when we go to the dentist's office, maybe you saw this in the lesson already now. First, a dental hygienist will clean your teeth teeth, and then the dentist will come and look for other uh, other problems for sure. Let's see here. Um potato says, hello, teacher Bob. How often do Canadians visit a dentist or an optometrist eye doctor? Yes, if they haven't problems with teeth and eyes. Gigantic. Thanks you. Thank you. Um so, yeah, dentist probably once a year, six to nine months depending on your insurance. Um eye doctor usually, I see, I don't wear glasses but my kids go about once a year but Jen only goes about every two or three years to the eye doctor. So, it can depend for sure. Um Madi says, hi, Bob. Can you name all the teeth names? Uh I can't, Madi but I know these are your front teeth. I know that the ones to the side can be called canine teeth which is kind of like dog teeth and then your back teeth are called molars and I think I have slides for those coming up in a bit. Let's see here. Next question from Ruslan. Hello, dear teacher Bob. It's nice to see you again. Thanks, Ruslan. No question today. I just wish you need no doctors at all. Stay healthy and positive. Best wishes, sir. Thanks, Ruslan for those kind wishes. That's very nice. Next question from Katarina. Hello, dear teacher Bob. The human eye, <clears throat> let me start again. The human eye will focus on about 50 things per second. Do you think glasses are better than contacts? Little fix there. Nice and spring weekends. So, Jen wears contacts almost all the time but she does like wearing glasses at night and on the weekends. Uh my kids, it's kind of hit or miss. My three of my kids wear glasses. Um and they sometimes wear contacts. They sometimes just put their glasses on. Actually, four of my kids wear glasses. Yeah, I don't. I just use reading glasses. That's it. Something uh something I'm not looking forward to is when I need to wear glasses all the time but I think it will be not too bad. Um so, what do I think are better? Um I think glasses are more convenient. You can just throw them on and go but contacts must be nice because they just no one can see that you're wearing glasses. Uh Ario says, hello, Mr. Bob. How are you? I'm always afraid. I've always felt afraid of the dentist. How about you? So, I yeah, I I okay. I'll admit it. I think I'm afraid of the dentist. I don't like going to the dentist. Um I think it's something where um yeah, I just don't enjoy it. It's never a good day if I know I have a dentist appointment. 
but when I'm done, I always feel happy that my teeth are cleaned. Um let me check here for the next question. So, here's a good question. Maxime, hello, Mr. Bob. How much does it cost approximately for one dental filling in Canada? So, a little fix to the question there, Maxime. Thank you. I think it probably costs about seven or eight hundred dollars for a filling. If it's a simple filling, it's probably quite expensive. If it's more complex, if it's harder to do, it might be in it might be a thousand dollars or more. The dentist is quite expensive. That's why it's always nice to have um health insurance or benefits. Um Jose says, the dentist office smells good. What is it? Well, a lot of stuff in the dentist office is mint flavored. So, mint is like from peppermint. You can get peppermint tea but at the doctor's office, they have toothpaste with mint flavor. They have uh they polish your teeth and it has mint flavor. Um they have toothpaste with mint flavor, mouthwash with mint flavor. There's a lot of things that smell like mint in a doctor's in a dentist's office. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Um okay. Let's get back to the lesson. Um before I do though, let me just check something. I do wanna welcome the 390 people watching. If you're new here, you should click that red subscribe button uh and you should give me a thumbs up if you like this video as well. You don't have to but if you're enjoying it, there's a button down there where you can click thumbs up. Why don't you do that? Um but welcome. I'm Bob the Canadian. I teach English here on YouTube. I'm also a real teacher in real life. A real teacher in real life. Yes, I'm also a teacher in real life. (laughs) <laughs> not a fake teacher in real life um but uh welcome to the 390 people watching. It's good to see you. Uh let's get on with the English lesson. If you have a cavity and we saw this in a question earlier, if you have a cavity, you might need a filling. So, a filling is not a fun procedure when you go to the dentist and if you need a filling, they will remove the cavity So, they'll use like a drill and it'll make this awful sound like and they will remove the cavity from the tooth and they will replace it with a filling. I think I have about five or six fillings in my mouth. They look exactly like that. They are made from some sort of soft metal that hardens in your tooth. I don't know all the details but if you have a cavity, the dentist not the dental hygienist. The dentist will remove the cavity and you will then have a filling put in and then it will work like a normal tooth again and it will be healthy. Um before that happens, I don't wanna make this too big. This this scares me. Maybe this is why I don't like the dentist. Before you get a filling, the dentist will probably um give you a needle to numb your mouth or to freeze your mouth. We use two words for that. Um it makes your mouth numb so that you can't feel pain. So, the dentist will give you a needle in your gums. So, I'll talk about gums in a bit. Your gums are the um I don't wanna be too (laughs) your gums are the skin around your teeth. So, the dentist will give you a needle. It will freeze that area of your mouth. It will make it numb. And then you will feel no pain and then the dentist will start to work on giving you a filling. Sometimes when your face is numb, it can be really hard to talk and I have a funny story about that. I went to the dentist once and I got a filling in the morning and I had to teach later that day Um, and the dentist said, oh, the freezing will be gone in an hour. Your face will stop being numb in an hour. But my face actually was frozen all day. My face felt numb all day. It was numb all day. So, I was talking like really funny because I couldn't move my face and mouth because it was all frozen from the dentist. My students thought it was hilarious. Um so, this is less common now because I think many people in Canada take really good care of their teeth but I know that my dad my dad had dentures. My dad had false teeth, okay? He had his real teeth on the bottom but he wore false teeth on the top because when he was a kid many, many years ago, he didn't br- they didn't brush their teeth as often 
and they didn't take care of their teeth. So, he ended up getting his teeth removed. Um he had a lot of teeth that were missing and then he got false teeth or what we call dentures. And there's another funny story about this. When I was a kid, when my dad would get mad, if I was doing something wrong and my dad would get mad, when he would start to yell, his teeth his teeth would fall out. I shouldn't probably laugh. Sorry. <clears throat> I probably shouldn't laugh at that but yes, I have these memories as a kid. If my dad was mad at me, he would take his teeth out and put them in his pocket <laughs> before he would start yelling at me because he didn't want his teeth to fly out of his mouth. I think it's okay to laugh about that. In Canada, many older people have false teeth. But I think fewer people every year need false teeth because we have pretty good uh, dental care in Canada now. So, I think that has helped quite a bit. But I have uncles with false teeth. Um, My grandparents had false teeth for sure and my dad had false teeth, teeth as well. False teeth. That's hard to say, isn't it? False teeth. Um I never got braces when I was a kid. Braces are if you can see the metal, let's zoom in a bit more. If you can see the metal bands on this young man's teeth, he has what are called braces. Braces are used to straighten your teeth out. If your teeth are very crooked, you might get braces as a teenager uh to straighten your teeth out. Some adults get braces as well. Um I actually have my bottom teeth, I have a few that are a little crooked here. The teeth are kind of overlapped and the teeth, they keep getting more and more crowded together. So, someday I might get braces to fix that but I wouldn't get braces to fix how my teeth look. I doesn't really matter to me. I don't care if my teeth look crooked. That's fine Um, but if you have teeth that are a little bit crooked, you would get braces. Um and then Brent mentioned this earlier in the chat, fluoride is a common thing that we use with teeth. In toothpaste, you have fluoride and fluoride helps prevent cavities, okay? Uh some towns have fluoride in their drinking water in Canada because it prevents people from getting cavities and at the dentist, they will often put fluoride on your teeth as part of your checkup in order to prevent cavities. So, when you prevent something, you stop it from happening. Uh we talked about the gums. Your teeth are in your gums. So, the pink part around your teeth is called your gums. Sometimes people have sore gums um and when they go to the dentist, the dentist might say, oh, are you experiencing sore gums and they'll teach you how to brush your teeth properly so that doesn't happen. Um so, we talked a little bit about types of teeth. I don't know a lot about teeth. But these are your front teeth. When you're a kid, your front teeth usually fall out at some point and it looks really funny. Um and you have your molars at the back. Um and I should talk a little bit. I don't have a slide about this but in Canada and some other parts of the world, when children start to lose their teeth because kids lose their teeth at a certain age and then new teeth grow back in, kids in Canada put that tooth, when a tooth falls out, when they lose a tooth, they will put it under their pillow and then the tooth fairy comes at night and puts money there and takes their tooth. But I'll tell you a little secret. The tooth fairy is actually their parents. I think you all knew that um but I don't know what the custom is in other countries but in Canada, when children lose their teeth, they will put them under their pillow and then the tooth fairy will come and take the tooth and put money there but it's actually just the parents doing it. So, front teeth in the front, uh molars. I know there's incisors and canine teeth and there's probably other names but those are just the two that are most familiar and then as was mentioned in the chat earlier, your wisdom teeth are molars at the very back uh of your of your mouth and often in Canada, people will have them removed because there's not enough room in your mouth for that many teeth and it pushes the other teeth forward. So, people often get their wisdom teeth removed. The dentist always asks me if I like my smile. This is a very common question when you're at the dentist's office. When you're all done, the dentist will say, do you like your smile? And I always say yes. 
because I think they ask this question because they want you to say no so that that you spend more money to fix things. <laughs> I think that's that's the dentist's goal is for to see if you don't like your smile then maybe they can if you pay them more money they will make you have a really nice smile. I always say I love my smile. It works for me. Um when you're taking care of teeth at home you're going to of course use toothpaste uh and you are going to use a toothbrush and you are going to use dental floss. You're supposed to brush your teeth three times a day. I brush my teeth before I go to work and I usually floss at night. Sorry, let me get back to this. I brush my teeth before I go to work and I brush my teeth before I go to bed. I usually floss before I go to bed as well but I don't do this every day. Um the dentist always asks if you're flossing and I usually have to say yeah a few couple times a week. Um so generally I brush my teeth twice a day. Um you're supposed to brush your teeth after every meal but I I I'll just be honest I I don't do that. Um oh we're done with the dentist. That's surprising. We should uh give me one second here and I'll make a small change to the stream itself. There we go. Let me save that. So, what we're going to do here is um we're gonna go to questions. So, uh we are in members only chat mode right now. Members are people who have clicked the join button to support my channel and to support the work I do teaching English on YouTube. Um what member support does is a few things. One is my videos do not have ads in the middle, okay? For almost six months now or more. My videos have ads at the beginning and the end but there are no ads in the middle of my videos. So, I like doing that and I'm able to do that because of member support. So, thank you so much members for joining and helping me be able to do that. They also help me buy equipment and that's kind of cool. I hope to get a better internet connection soon in the next few months and then maybe the quality, the video quality of this might go up. We'll see. Anyways, if you're a member, you may ask questions in the chat during live streams, during the members only portion. Uh you also get an extra video every week which is kind of fun for me. I hope it's fun for you. Let's see here. Uh Al Gore says flossing is needed after a steak. Yes, after you eat certain types of meat, flossing your teeth is sometimes quite important because you have little piece of uh pieces of food stuck between your teeth. Corey J says, I don't understand why my dentist keeps asking me questions while fixing my teeth. I'm not able to answer his questions. Quite annoying with tools in my mouth. I have the same experience. J'ai la même expérience avec la, le dentiste. I have the same experience. The dentist will have things in my mouth and he'll be like, so how are things going? And you say, oh, pretty good, pretty good. It's so hard to talk when someone is working on your teeth. Uh, let me see here. Sam the Taiwanese. Hello, teacher Bob. Is dental implants popular in Canada? Do you need to pay for a dental implant or your health care would cover it? So, it depends on your health care. My dental health coverage or my my benefits for the dentist covers routine cleanings and fillings and cavities. Anything more than that, I usually need to pay half and it can get quite expensive. I had a tooth that broke and to fix it, it cost me $400. The total bill was $800 but I had to pay half. Um Rod has a question here on the screen. I'll read that for a sec. Hello, Mr. Bob. How afraid are you to go to the dentist or none at all? I dread it though. Have a great Friday. Yes, I don't like it, Rod. I do not like going to the dentist. I'm I love it that we have a dental care, okay? But I don't really enjoy going. Uh let's see here. Uh Anuat says, I mean dental. Yes. Oh, what is the difference between public and private care in Canada? Which would you prefer? So, we have public health care for everything except eyes and teeth. So, you always need to pay for dental work and eye care but sometimes it's paid for through work. I think you know what the difference is? So, health care is free but you end up waiting a lot. The dentist is not free and it's very timely and well run for sure. Uh let's see here. Let me make sure I'm not missing a question. F Jenny says, hello to your teacher. No question today. Just stay safe and healthy as well. Thank you. But if you go to the dentist after all, I wish you feel like it's a fairy tale in there. I wish it was. 
Al Gore says, I once fell asleep in a dentist chair. So comfortable. It is tempting, isn't it? Just to close your eyes and go to sleep. Uh Sio Wu says, hi, Bob. I'm happy to see you. Thank you, Sio Wu. Lolly Lolly, Bob, do you have to take a special insurance for the dentist or the appointment? Does it work like in the USA? So, basically, it's all automatic for me. I go to the dentist and they just they bill my place of work on the computer through its insurance company. So, um yeah, it's very straightforward. Al Gore, an artificial eye lens and as a hockey player, almost a mouthful of dental implants. Oh, yes. Okay. So, Al Gore has an artificial eye lens, I think. And then and then yes, hockey players sometimes lose their teeth. My dentist has never asked me whether I like my smile or not. I think it's something new that's happening. I think it's something new because it gets people talking about whether they like their teeth or not. Key Park says, I'm gonna take an appointment to get my teeth clean this today. I've not seen the dentist for over one and a half years because of the pandemic. Yes, our dentist's office was actually closed for almost four or five months last last year. So, they're very busy right now. Um Sam, Samuel Chen, I got my four wisdom teeth pulled out in my 20s. Little fix there, Sam. Uh, I call it a nightmare. Thanks for this great topic. Yes, I did not enjoy it either, Samuel. Um I was, yes, it was not fun. Key Park, by the way, today's news. Teeth model can be 3D printed so people can expect daily fake teeth. Yeah, they can print uh models of teeth but they can also print like invisible braces that you wear and you change them every two or three days to move your teeth. Interesting. Uh Elias, here in Brazil when you lose a tooth, you throw it on the roof and make three wishes. Ah, interesting. Marco says, while the dentists keep asking you questions, you are able to answer just with uh, aham or nuh or okay. Yes, Marco. It's definitely very true. Um let's see here. Let me get to the next question from the forum. Um yes. Alyssa, what do you call the back teeth? Usually the eighth in the order which often cause problems and a lot of people have them pulled out. We call them wisdom teeth. Um and I think I had a slide of that. Let me find that back for a sec. So, yes, we call them wisdom teeth. Definitely. Uh let's see. Next question. So, Mikhail says, hi, Bob. How's it going? Good. What is the proper name for those metal stuff that's put on teeth in order to straighten them? Brackets or braces? Thanks a lot. Have a good day. In Canada, we call them braces, okay? So, my kids have crooked teeth and then one by one, they've gotten braces to straighten them out. They might be called brackets somewhere else but in Canada, we definitely call them braces. Um let's see here. Marco says, dentists in Canada are doctors too. In Brazil, they aren't. There are a lot of jokes about it. So, yes, they are a doctor of dentistry, I think. So, they're not a full doctor. They're not a medical doctor but I do, my dentist does have doctor in front of his name, okay? And Jen's dentist has doctor in front of her name as well. Al Gore, an art, an artificial eye lens is just great, by the way. A multifocal one, you don't need no glasses. Well, that's cool. I've never heard of that. I will research that later, Al. That's interesting to me. Let's see here. S.L. Lenka says, hi, Bob. Good to see you again. One day a long time ago, I fell and broke one of my front teeth. It cost two twenty thousand uh oh a hundred US dollars to fix it. Is dental cheap in Canada? No, it's not cheap. If you did that in Canada, if you broke a tooth or chipped a tooth, it would be a few hundred dollars to get fixed. Be more than a hundred dollars US for sure. Um let's see here. So, Al Gore, I think this is the same question as we saw in the chat. I got an eye lens replaced with an artificial one last year. It's great and as a former hockey player, I got almost a mouthful of dental implants. Yes, hockey takes its toll on people's teeth. Uh let's see here. Mode says, hi, Mr. Bob. I hope you and your family are doing well. Is there a difference between dental cavities and caries? Thanks for the interesting topic. Stay safe. So, um basically, let me just check something for a sec. Sorry, I'll get to that question in a moment. Trying to figure out where, there we go. Um so, caries is like the official word for cavities but no one knows that word. I actually just learned that word last night 
when I was researching this topic but it's like the medical term for cavities. We say cavities in English. That is the only word that most people will use. Dentists might use the word caries when they're talking to each other but we definitely say cavities. Yep. When my kids go to the dentist, I always hope they don't have too many cavities. Um let's see here. The Russian for wisdom tooth is just the same word for word. Yeah, they don't make you very wise though, wisdom teeth, I don't think. It's interesting. Um yeah, next question is the same. Oh, I got a little something's wrong here. Oh, I see. I'm at the end of the questions. Okay, no problem. Um The next question was actually are caries and cavities the same thing? So, it was the same question. Hey, let's get back to the lesson. Before we do, I just wanna say welcome to the 411 people watching. If this is your first time here, please click the subscribe button and you will get notified when I do a new lesson. So, I'm on wisdom tooth but we were actually about to start eye doc. There we go. Let me have a little drink here. Okay. So, let me, (laughs) I'm forgetting things. Let me turn off the members only chat. There we go. And just once again, thank you to all my members for supporting me. If anyone is interested in being a member, there's a join button below. So, we're done talking about the dentist. Let's talk about the eye doctor. So, the eye doctor also has their own office. It's called the eye doctor's office, okay? Or it might be called an eye care center. Um but generally we say it's the eye doctor's office. The eye doctor is also called an optometrist. I think there's also a word ophthalmologist but I think an ophthalmologist has more medical training than an optometrist. An optometrist is an eye doctor, someone who can look at your eyes and can recommend what glasses you need to wear or if you need to wear glasses. So, definitely we would call it call them the eye doctor. When Jen has to take one of the kids to the eye doctor, that's how we talk about it. She'll say, oh yeah, I made a I made an appointment with the eye doctor. We need to go to the eye doctor today or we need to go to the eye doctors today. So, you can kind of use singular and plural. Um and it's called an eye doctor's office or an eye care center and you go there because you might have concerns about your vision or your eyesight. Your ability to see, okay? So, sometimes you might have blurry vision. You might have trouble reading things because your eyes won't focus. You might have eyes that are sore at the end of a workday. The way I knew I needed reading glasses was because I was getting a headache at the end of the workday and it was from eye strain because I was trying to focus while I was reading things, not realizing a pair of uh, reading glasses would have been really helpful. So, you go to the eye doctor. When you have concerns about your vision or concerns about your eyesight, we could use those two words almost in the same way. And you might need glasses which is actually the short form for eyeglasses. We don't say eyeglasses very often. We almost always just say glasses. Where are my glasses? Does anyone know where my glasses are? I've lost my glasses. I need my glasses to read those kinds of things. Um but definitely you would go to the eye doctor to find out if you need glasses or to find out if your current glasses are strong enough, okay? Because your eyes can get weaker over time and sometimes you need new glasses. Um or you might wear contacts or contact lenses. We rarely say contact lenses. That's a lot of that's a lot of letters. It's two words instead of one. We almost always say contacts, okay? Sometimes when we're going somewhere, I'll say to Jen, um are you, when do you wanna leave? And she might say, let's leave in five minutes. I just need to put my contacts in, okay? So, Jen puts her contacts in in the morning. She takes her contacts out at night. She puts her contacts in a little, she cleans them and puts them in a little case to store them overnight. Um but definitely Jen when we go out usually wears contacts. I probably would not say contact lenses um very often. It's just too many words for one idea to express. Um you might be nearsighted or you might be farsighted, okay? When you are nearsighted, it means you need glasses to see things that are far away, okay? I am not nearsighted, okay? I can see things far away very easily 
and I'm not farsighted. I can sorry, I'm not near <laughs> Let me get this right. When you are nearsighted, you can see things that are close to you very easily. Let me back up and make sure I'm saying this correctly. When you are farsighted, you can see things that are far away very easily. I think I said it wrong the first time around. So, when you are nearsighted, it means that you can read without glasses. You can see things in the room very easily but it's hard to see stuff in the distance. It's hard to see things that are far away. When you are farsighted, it's really easy to see things that are far away but you might need glasses to cook food or to read a book, okay? So, that's the difference between those two and there's probably more difficult medical names that I'm not aware of but those are the names that we generally use in English. I don't have 2020 vision but it's pretty close, okay? 2020 vision is when you do not need glasses. You do not need contacts because your eyesight is almost perfect, okay? So, 2020 vision is eyesight where um when you wake up in the morning, everything's clear. Nothing's blurry or fuzzy or out of focus. You can just see without glasses. You don't need glasses to read. You don't need glasses to see things that are far away. You can just see all the time. So, I would say I don't have 2020 vision but pretty close because the only reason I need to wear glasses is sometimes when I read. Sometimes I don't. It's kind of interesting. Um but 2020 vision is perfect eyesight or perfect vision. Um so here's a whole lot of words. You would also make an appointment to see the eye doctor and wait in the waiting room before your checkup. So, all the words that we learned when we were talking about the dentist are very similar when you're talking about the eye doctor, okay? If you needed to see the eye doctor, you would make an appointment or book an appointment and then you would go see the eye doctor at the eye doctor's office and you would wait in the waiting room before your checkup, okay? So, a lot of the words are very, very similar. Um when you're at the eye doctor, you will most likely have an eye test. I don't know what this machine is but I did go to the eye doctor once and they made me look through it and then they switched the lenses to figure out what lens you need in order to be able to read the eye chart, okay? So, this to me is I don't know the exact name but it is a device with different lenses so that the eye doctor can continually change the lenses to figure out which one you need to be able to read an eye chart. So, an eye chart Let's make it bigger. There's a little bit of irony there. I have to make the eye chart bigger so we can read it. Um the eye chart starts with very, very large letters at the top and they get progressively smaller and the eye doctor will ask you to read the letters until you get to the point where you can't read them anymore and then the eye doctor has a really good idea how good your vision is and if you see on the side here, There's actually 2200, 2050, 2020. So, it's kind of um a tool the doctor can use um in order to figure out what kind of lenses you will need. If you need glasses, the doctor will write you a prescription. So, a prescription is a piece of paper signed by the doctor saying either you need medicine if it's from a medical doctor or glasses, a certain type of glasses if you're uh, at um, an eye doctor. So, you might not get your glasses from the eye doctor. You might go somewhere else and buy them but this will tell you what lens you need for your right eye and your left eye, okay? So, if you know your prescription, you can just you can buy glasses from the eye doctor. Most eye doctors sell glasses but you can also just go online and order glasses from the internet as long as you know what your prescription is. You need to know what strength lenses you need for each of your eyes. Some people get laser eye surgery. We also sometimes call it LASIK. I think that's kind of the common name but laser eye surgery is the general term. This is when you go and they actually use a laser to correct your lens so that you don't need glasses or contacts anymore. Um I know my sister-in-law got laser eye surgery 
um and she loves it. So, she just thinks it's the greatest thing because she has worn or she did wear contacts and glasses for a very long time and now she's very excited because a few years ago she got laser eye surgery and now she doesn't need glasses anymore. Um I have two more slides just for fun. Spectacles. <laughs> so, spectacles. This is a word we don't use anymore. It is a very very old word for glasses, okay? So, sometimes if you're reading a really old uh story from many many years ago, the person in the story might wear spectacles. Spectacles is just an old fashioned word for glasses. And then there's also monocle. A monocle is a single lens. No one wears monocles anymore but you might be watching an old movie where the person has a monocle. A monocle is a single lens that helps people see. It's not a magnifying glass. A magnifying glass is something you use you hold further away but a monocle you might watch a really old show where someone has a monocle and they use the monocle to uh to read or to see things in the distance. Uh anyway, spectacles and monocles. No one wears these anymore. Well, people wear spectacles. We just call them glasses. Um but that's that's it. That's the end of the lesson. Let me uh don't leave though. I am gonna go and check how many questions I have to answer yet. I have a few here. Um let's see here. Um let me get to the question page. Um here we go. From Natalia. Bob, in your experience, when does a person get wisdom teeth? I am quite an adult now but my wisdom teeth haven't grown yet. Have a nice day, Bob. So, I don't think everyone necessarily has problems with them. Mine started to grow I think as a teenager but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I do know most people have their wisdom teeth taken out when they're in their twenties. So, they must start growing at some point when you're a teenager but I don't think Natalia, I don't think everybody gets them. I think many people do. Some people get their wisdom teeth but it does not cause any trouble for them. So, who knows? Uh let's see here. Next question uh from Oleg. How are you? I'm good, Oleg. Thank you very much. Let me go to the previous question. Let me check my question sheet for a sec just to make sure. Yes, I think we're good on the questions. Let me put this slide back up. Hey, that was the lesson about teeth and eyes. The lesson uh the English lesson about the dentist and the eye doctor. Uh thank you so much for being here. I think we're done a little bit earlier than normal but that's fine. Sometimes having a lesson that's a bit shorter isn't a problem. Um if you are wondering what's going on, what what did you just click on? I'm Bob the Canadian. I teach English here on YouTube. I make videos for every Tuesday. I do a live English lesson every Friday and I will be doing a live lesson tomorrow where it will just be open questions and answers. You can ask questions about anything you want and I usually try to answer them as best as possible. Um I am just gonna read the chat a little bit for a sec. Uh let's see here. Norma and Natalia Illusion are talking. Very cool. The, Norma's talking about eye drops. So, it's one thing I didn't mention but sometimes when your eye is sore or you have an infection, the eye doctor will give you eye drops to put in your eye in order to cure that. So, um it can be very helpful if you have pain or something in your eyes. Ricardo says, hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here today. I hope you have a nice weekend. Thanks, Ricardo. I like it when you are here greeting other people. Nice to see. Uh Madi says, my wisdom teeth grew when I was 26 years old. So, there sounds like there is some variation on that. Al Gore says, thank you for this class, Bob. No problem, Al. Uh Claudia says, very interesting class. Thank you so much. No problem, Claudia. Uh and Naomi says, thank you for this class, Bob. No problem. Um Frida is asking, could you please pronounce spectacles and monocle again? So, spectacles, the old term for glasses, spectacles and monocle, the single lens. So, spectacles, monocle. There you go. Uh let's see. Rachel the Ting says, goodbye everyone. I need to go back to my work. See you next time, Bob. Goodbye, Bob the Canadian. See you, Rachel. Um and then Corey says, thanks for this very useful vocabulary, teacher Bob. No problem. Hey, I hope you all have a good day. Um I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh I will see you again as I mentioned at 11 a.m. tomorrow. 
I will be doing another Q and A live English lesson. So, come back for that if you would like. If there were parts of this lesson that you didn't understand, remember this will be released in a couple days in a shorter format and it will have English automatic English subtitles which are usually fairly accurate and might help you understand different parts of the lesson. So, in about two days, this lesson will be released again on this channel. Subscribe if you want notification for when that happens and click the bell. Um but uh do watch parts of it again or just listen to it again. It can be good for training your ear to understand English to listen to the lesson two or three times. Anyways, Bob the Canadian here. Um I don't have to go to work today. I'm still teaching from home. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm in my living room and not at not rushing off to work um and why I'm so relaxed because we are still remote. Our school got closed. We'll probably go back to in-person learning next week. Anyways, bye everybody. Uh let me say bye to some people in the chat. Bye Madi. Bye Ram Siva. Bye Suvia. Bye Corey J. Bye Hiro Huki, Yuki. Uh bye Basement Cat Tiger. Bye Todd. Bye Dave. Uh, by Maxim, by Juliana, by Natalia Illusion. Hi, Natalia. By Lily, by Ataala, by RB, by Al Gore, by Semra, by Lolly Lolly. I'm saying names twice now, aren't I? Uh, by Inda Pulupi, by everybody, by Tony. Um, I'm gonna go now. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. I think I've rambled, I've rambled on long enough now. So, uh, bye, everybody. Have a good day. See ya.